Hey folks, I've got another 3D scanning video. This one is sponsored by Revelpoint, who have sent over their brand new 3D scanner, the Range 2. This is a scanner that's designed for scanning large objects like people and cars. You may remember that I got to try out the original range last year, and uh, this one feels like a nice update to that. It's a little more compact, and the design looks a lot more professional. The Range 2 has an introductory 10% discount, and Revopoint is offering an additional discount for my subscribers. Details will be in the video description. They would also like me to mention the Range Series Facebook group, where there will be showcases of the scanner's capabilities and giveaways. The Range 2 has several other upgrades over the previous one, including onboard LEDs and a higher resolution camera for better color texture capturing and improved tracking for both marker-based and topographic tracking modes. But the biggest difference for me is that the scanning area, what they call the single capture range, which is the amount that the scanner can see at one time is a lot bigger than it was in the previous model. That means it has a wider angle of view, so it's able to see more of the subject at one time, and that allows you to scan that much faster and more easily. Now, I don't really make a lot of large projects that would need to be scanned, but my friends over at Van Oak Cemetery have the perfect thing. So I'm going to pack it up in this really nice carrying case that they've included and head over there. You may know Derek from his YouTube channel, Van Oaks Props, where he shows his process building everything from haunted crypts to space gadgets. He does a yard haunt every year for Halloween, and the centerpiece is a statue named Charlotte, made by Mrs. Van Oaks. This is a great subject for 3D scanning because the draped folds of the robes create lots of unique detail for the scanner to track. Plus, being a one-of-a-kind fabricated sculpture, reproducing something like this by molding it or remaking it from scratch would be much more difficult than using a 3D scan. At first, I tried doing this scan outside, but the sunlight was overexposing the scanner, which uses infrared light so we brought it into the garage. I'm scanning one side at a time, pausing, turning the statue, and resuming the scan. Because the scanner picks up a bit of these cemetery columns in the background at each position, the software is going to think that there are many columns surrounding the statue all around. That's not really a problem because we'll trim those away in the editing steps. The first time I tried processing this scan, I set the detail level to the finest setting, which is 0.3 millimeters. And that proved to be more than my computer can really handle. If you think about it, setting points in 3D space every 0.3 millimeters over a model that's almost five feet tall is a huge amount of data. And it made the project file almost eight gigabytes. I reprocessed the fusion at one millimeter, and it was much more manageable. This means that the result is going to be less detailed than what the scanner is capable of capturing, but since the final output will likely be a smaller scale 3D print, it's going to be plenty. While we're waiting for the scan to process, I thought it would be nice to hear from Mrs. Van Oaks on how the Charlotte statue came to be. So when I met my now husband, he uh, is a haunter and had made a ton of Halloween props for the yard. And I told him one year that I wanted to make something for the yard. And he was like, that's great. And I told him I wanted to make a Gothic morning statue. And he said, also great. And I told him I wanted to make it life size. And he was like, let's do this. One of the things that's done traditionally is the uh, frame for these kind of homemade statues is usually PVC and it's very square. Um, so a lot of the work I did to build this was to soften the angles and round out the form using things like pool noodles and chicken wire and expanding foam. So it's a bunch of crazy underneath this. 
um, to get to the point of doing like soft sculpture on top, which is draped monster mud cloth. I would never be able to make this exact prop again. Uh, I learned a lot doing it, but definitely it's a one-off. Back on the computer, I've loaded the scan into ZBrush to see the results more clearly and do some cleanup. For the most part, this came out really well with no overlap errors or other misalignment, despite the size of the scan. The only problems I have are a few areas inside the hood, between the arms, and in some deep folds where the scanner wasn't able to get a good angle to capture. Since these areas are pretty hidden anyway, it's only going to take a little bit of resculpting to get Charlotte looking as good as she should. My basic process is to dynamesh the model at a high resolution to get an even density of polygons to work with, then use my sculpting brushes to rework what needs fixing. When I'm done, I decimate the model to reduce the number of polygons that make up the surface, which makes for a smaller file size for the 3D printing slicer program. And that's as far as I'm going to take this project because Derek is working on his own project using the 3D model over on the Van Oaks Props channel. So head over there to see how that turns out. I'll put a link down below. The Range 2 is available from Revel Point now, so head over to their website to get all the info on that. If you use the link in the description, it lets them know that you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Don't forget to also check the description for a special discount for subscribers to this channel. And if you'd like to see more from me, take a moment and subscribe. I've got some projects I'm very excited about coming up, including updates to the animatronic parrot kit that you won't want to miss. 